This is Finch, a movie about the relationship between a human, a dog, and a humanoid robot set against the backdrop of a post-apocalypse. Through the sandstorm, which covers abandoned cars and belongings with dunes, a man in a spacesuit makes his way. This is Finch, the protagonist and engineer. Observing through the streams of sand the facade of the supermarket, he walks forward, ignoring the assistant's report about the weather conditions mumbling under his breath. Along with him, the empty shelves are checked by Dewey, a robot on four wheels with an additional arm and a shopping basket on its back. A man scans the dried bodies of long-dead people on the floor with a green laser. This is how he indicates targets for Dewey. It seems the robot is picking up cans of food for the dog while Finch looks for other supplies. He is interested in the pet products department, in particular dog food. Upon completing the inspection, Finch spray paints the facade so that he doesn't accidentally waste time re-inspecting. He climbs into his dump truck, wipes over with a map, marking the places they've already cleared. With a new goal in mind, Finch drives a truck through a post-apocalyptic city covered in sand to the hilt. Suddenly, the voice assistant reports that the barometric pressure is dropping. This is the first sign of an impending one. A huge wall of sand rises in front of the storm. It quickly moves in his direction and he must urgently retreat to a safe underground base. Dewey, with the recovered supplies, Finch drags to the shelter under powerful gusts of wind that threaten to carry away everything that is not secured. After a thorough procedure to wash off the small particles of dust from the robot's spacesuit, Finch takes a shower. In the process, he is twisted by a coughing fit. Forays into the depopulated city do not pass without a trace. Finch descends into an underground dwelling where he is found. A dog named Goodyear meets. After feeding Maknatov and the dependent, Finch eats himself and lays out the supplies he has obtained, after which he begins his main project. A man picks up a bunch of books at the library. A mechanical device vaguely reminiscent of a mix of Skynet's Goldberg machine for stamping Terminators carefully cuts off their spines to scan each page. The engineer is soldering the boards of the new robot, only distracted to play with his dog. Before sleep, lying in the... Telefinch is reading a book, The Effects of Ionizing Radiation. His sad face suggests that what he's read does not inspire optimism. Seemingly he himself has been exposed to such radiation and won't last long. Then what will happen to the good boy slumbering at the man's feet? Plagued by these grim thoughts and the insomnia they cause, the engineer continues to work. Books are scattered around the office about gamma radiation, the effects of ultraviolet rays and solar flares, along with the latest book titled Surviving the End of the World in May. These books reveal the mystery of the apocalypse's prehistory, as the powerful solar flares made the planet's surface uninhabitable. Finch is working on the head of the new robot and needs eyes, so he has to extract Dewey's eyepieces, blinding him. After finishing with the metallic stuffing, the engineer initiates the boot program, starting by copying the scanned information. After some calibration, Finch questions the robot's head, which starts nodding in response. Back, then the engineer activates the voice synthesizer. Now the robot is able to communicate not only via gestures but also with a voice, narrating interesting facts about everything in the database. Giraffes can survive without water for longer than camels. When Finch asks the robot to tell something about itself, it informs him that it obeys three laws. Of course, we are referring to Asimov's renowned laws of robotics. But Finch's creation, like Robocop, is gifted with a fourth rule, a priority one. In Finch's absence, the robot is tasked with looking after the dog's well-being. The robot wonders when Finch's absence will begin, but then the power shuts off. The man has to go above ground where the wind generator has failed. During the repair, he spots a large storm on the horizon. Massive! Much more than the ones that have occurred earlier. He heads back to the shelter where the robot is having a conversation with the dog. And in return, the dog growls and urinates on the robot's body that is yet to be attached to its head. The engineer hooks the robot up to the weather station, only to receive bad news. The upcoming storm is forecasted to last at least 40 days, like the biblical flood, and this storm will catch up to the shelters in a day. Finch springs into action. The plan is to get as far away as possible from the hazardous region. San Francisco becomes the chosen destination. In a way, the decision is motivated by sentimental attachment. Finch has a collection of postcards starting with images of the Golden Gate Bridge. It's time to get to safety. Not much room left. The disease is already causing nosebleeds. The engineer attaches the robot's head to the body and teaches it to walk. There are some falls, but the iron creature quickly learns, though it moves clumsily at first. 
Having collected all the supplies, Finch loads everything into a modernized motorhome. He hangs a postcard with a bridge on the dashboard to mark the destination. The man sets off on a journey. The motorhome rolls through the desert highway covered with sand. The highway is shrouded in sand. The robot looking out the window notices an interesting fact that over 600,000 people live in St. Louis. But where have they all gone? It's a long story, notes Finch, remembering times when flowers bloomed instead of a desert. Having traveled a safe distance, they make a stop. Finch finishes the robot's head while it looks at a collection of postcards with bridges from around the world. He wants to visit all these places, but the engineer cools his ardor. It's very far away, we need to get to... We have to get to Siska first. Taking advantage of the stop, Finch goes out with the robot on a training sortie. The first lesson is that you have to look for food on any occasion, especially for a hungry dog. Along the way, Finch tells how the world came to this state. The sun's flare has blown out the ozone layer, so living beings can't be in an open place without a special spacesuit. While they were searching the building, bad weather caught up with them. A voice assistant warns them of a nearby tornado. Finch tries to steer the car away, but a natural disaster ravages the pits, forcing them to resort to emergency measures. Together with the robot, they drive in a wedge and secure the trail to it with metal cables, like a tent. A tornado overtakes them, tearing through almost all the fastenings. The car is lifted into the air and shaken violently but the last cable holds strong. Finch changes the burst tire using the robot as a jack. Afterward, he decides it's time to give the robot a name. He begins to go through the names of famous people, but the engineer dismisses one option after another. Eventually, settling on the short and simple option, Jeff. Finch shakes Jeff's hand, acknowledging him as a person. Jeff tries to learn a dog's language to improve his communication with Goodyear, but Goodyear just barks at him, showing no trust. Finch explains the concept of trust to the robot, recounting a story from his past. When another coughing attack overwhelms him, unable to drive any longer, Longer, he parks in the shadow and after entering a cafe, he coughs up blood. Finch is forced to walk the good boy since he doesn't listen to Jeff. The robot, bored in the car, accidentally starts it and drives out of Stinney. Finch can't reach the van, as direct sunlight will burn his skin, and his protective suit remains in the cabin. But Jeff manages to back up. The robot's irresponsible behavior sparks a conflict. The angry creator reminds the mechanical creature that its main task is to care for the dog. After this incident, it becomes clear that the robots need driving lessons. Well done! At their next stop, Finch builds a fire and they sit outside gazing at the northern lights now visible from everywhere due to ozone layer depletion. Jeff asks why they don't travel at night since the daytime sun is dangerous for living beings. Finch seems offended that the robot doubted his mental abilities, thinking that a human had not thought of this before. But the main danger comes not from predictable natural phenomena, but from people, tiny remnants of surviving humanity that roam at night. Searching for food, Finch vomits blood in the morning. Exhausted, he falls onto the bed while Jeff gives him a cold compress. In the nearest town, he takes a trip to the hospital to find a cure for his creator. He brings Dewey with him. In the hospital, the robot finds a jacket. It disguises him, making him look like a human. Finch wakes up, puts on a spacesuit, and goes after the robots. He's extremely excited and not without reason. Someone set up a bear trap in the building. Dewey falls into it and falls apart. Find his remains, and Finch turns off the assistant. All of this turns out to be a trap from the very few survivors. Their footsteps can be heard in the hallway. Finch finds Jeff. They run away. However, they were noticed standing in the shadow of a car when they entered the overpass. Mystery pursuers catch up with them at night. Despite having a gun and ammunition, Finch is scared. He orders Jeff to turn off the headlights and pull off the highway to hide behind a bridge. The low clearance prevents the van from passing without damage. A solar panel comes into play. As soon as Jeff moves the stuck trailer, the mystery pursuers lose their track and leave. Finch, it's going to rain, which means, stop, pull yourself together, it's over. The next morning, Jeff notices a butterfly on the windshield. The van hit her at full speed. He'll be excited to show it to Finch. It turns out that the level of UV radiation here is not critical and it is safe to be outside. For the next stop, Finch puts it on. A white suit with a hat to joyously celebrate long-forgotten sensations. A pause in the fresh air, hence they play with the dog. First Finch, then Jeff throws a ball. Goodyear always brings a toy to a human. He doesn't trust a robot. Finch coughs up blood, tarnishing his pure white suit. His time is coming. The engineer asks the robot to play with the dog that it was created to care for, but the tailed beast goes with its master to the trailer, where they lay together on the bed. Finch pets Goodyear until, with his last breath, 
When his hand falls listlessly, the dog begins to howl in suffering and hopelessness. Jeff listens to the mournful howl from the street. He can do absolutely nothing to help the man. The only way the robot has managed to learn about the dead is to bury them like the Vikings. That's how he sends his creator on his last journey. Puts the body wrapped in a sheet on a fire pit and sets it on fire. Deprived of a kind of parental control, he is lost in thoughts of what to do next. He asks himself the question, what would Finn do? The answer is simple in its program, taking care of the dog. Jeff feeds Goodyear, surprised to find that he is designed to open cans of food. Without the gentle hands of a finch, the dog has to trust the robot. Goodyear even brings him a ball to play with. Together, the orphaned travelers keep moving. The dog still sleeps on the bed which retains its owner's scent. But the farther they go, the closer Goodyear gets to Jeff. Soon they achieve that very thing. Before heading to the bridge, the robot places a plaque on the side of the road in memory of Finchie. On the bridge, the safety net is replete with attached photos, messages for all kinds of people. Other survivors left messages for relatives in this way. Jeff realizes that there are places where people are left who can take care of the dog in case something happens. The robot decides to find them, but before going on its way, it attaches a net to Finch's postcard, on which it is clumsy, like a child's postcard. Drawn man in hat, skinny robot and dog that's all share your impressions in the comments and subscribe to the channel all the best